Good morning. Thank you again, uh, Professor Anna Otrovoska Coates. I don't know if I'm <laughs> pronouncing correctly uh, for your presentation. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to present our collaborative paper with my colleague Teresa Morla from the University of Barcelona about a project. Uh, entitled Dialogue and Science, that this project is about uh, how we can foster a dialogue between science and citizens, and particularly vulnerable groups. Um, this is a dialogue that uh, we think it's essential for sociologists of education, um, as well as scientists in all fields, and it enables us to enhance our scientific work to a great uh, possible impact and improving of, of society. Yes. As we can see uh, in different uh, articles and in different um, conclusions of the scientists, uh, there is an increasing demanding uh, from the citizens for their right to access to scientific research results and also to expect that science have a significant social impact in their lives. Um, improving their lives. So research is not longer isolated from society. Um, science has to be for the citizens and also with, uh, with the citizens uh, in a process of co-creation of, of knowledge. No? Um, as highlighted in this paper, as you can see, Soler and Gomez um, say that uh, the scientists, we have a responsibility, a social responsibility in um, making that uh, our results, the results of our research, benefits the society and the people also have the opportunity to participate in research no? and also to benefit from, from these results from science. And this will ensure that scientific advances are truly useful for um, and relevant for citizens. Mm, we you know that also uh, have the agenda, the agenda that the United Nations um, has provided, but it's, um, as we are in, a, in democratic societies, um, is the, the citizens who, desires, who decides the, the goals for their lives and for their communities. Um, we have a process of the this, uh, this colonization of the expert knowledge, as Beck stated, Mm, so mm, the traditional authorities like politicians, doctors, mm, teachers, pastors, I don't know, scientists, intellectuals, um, they do not define the goals anymore. It's uh, the science, uh, the citizenship and the public who decide. So um, uh, um, aligning with, this, with these uh, goals, um, uh, we are in our special no, goal that it's uh, quality education and our project uh, Dialogue and Science um, fosters discussion uh, on scientific evidence regarding this, um, this, this subject about student uh, grouping, bullying, family participation, uh, educational segregation uh, or inclusion, etc. So this is where we we, we work no, in, in our, in our uh, project. Um, because the, the citizens are exposed to um, fake news, disinformation, and this is one of the main problems that uh, the European Union uh, Commission has um, identified. So there are several studies that highlight the harmful that this, uh, this, mm, this, this information can uh, cause to um, to the public, to the citizens, and also uh, when, you, you, when the educational interventions are not based on scientific evidence, um, this is really harmful for students and for their families. So um, this is uh, why the research currently is set on the following principles, that is the co-creation and also the um, the impact no, of, of, of the results of the, of the research. Um, this is not new. I mean, uh, we have a traditional um, uh, um, research 
having into account the dialogue with citizens, as we can see, for example, in this book, that uh, different sociologists shared, uh, and this is a practice that has deeply rooted in our discipline. It's not, it's not that new, but it's now uh, posted by the um, European Commission very clearly for researchers. No? And if we go um, back, um, indeed, we are also discussing that it's, this is a recognized human right in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights by the United Nations, no? so that everyone has uh, the right freely to participate uh, in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts, and to share in scientific uh, advancements and its benefits. So this is what we are discussing. Uh, today and, and we, uh, what I'm presenting with uh, my colleague Teresa Morla, um, um, the basis of our project. No? So dialogue fosters knowledge, exchange, collaborative learning and the co-creation of fresh perspectives, impacting life aspirations and also citizens actively seek the benefits of scientific progress for informed decision making that um, impacts in their daily lives. So they have to be informed, and in a dialogic society, as we are living, we need um, dialogic, di dialogical sociology. Um, so now, uh, let's uh, explore some strategies uh, or tools from sociology of education that fosters this crucial connection, particularly, particularly with vulnerable groups. That is what we have worked in, in our project. Um, within the Horizon 2020 program of the European Commission, uh, the All Interact project um, that we can, you can see also in the in the slide um, also aims to diversity citizens' engagement in science and aligning with the current societal uh, aims or objectives that I have uh, explained previously. So uh, um, this methodology, this kind of, of, of making research analyzes how uh, or which successful actions can engage citizens, um, including vulnerable groups, focusing on bottom-up knowledge and co-creation with citizens through the communicative methodology that it's also been stated by the European Commission as um, uh, a very important methodology in, in research, but also when we are talking about vulnerable groups. So uh, this methodology um, um, allows us to take these tools to, to foster and to promote this dialogue. And um, it fosters also this, um, this co-creation of, of knowledge. Um, in this line, one of the results is the Adayana, you can see here, the, um, I think, no, this one the Adayana platform. And this uh, platform is a, a scientific evidence plant platform that is the world's first to gather scientific evidence in education based on social concerns and social uh, aims as stated. And um, one of the main uh, actions of our project of the, excuse me, this one, of the Dialogue and Science project was to um, access, to uh, foster the access of the citizenship to this platform. We have collaborated with All Interact Project um, with the aim to make this platform, Adiayana, accessible to vulnerable groups, providing training on the platform and the usage of the platform and also encouraging active participation because it's not only a platform where you can consult, it's also a platform where you can participate and this fosters this co-creation of scientific knowledge. Um, I will explain some, some examples on, on how it works. We have conducted 22 activities um, during the project involving over 440 participants with a significant proportion of vulnerable group, a very significant proportion. And we have over 
8,663 uh, access to Adyayana platform during these actions. Uh, and this, is one, this demonstrates how um, public demands their participation in, in research and they seek for evidence, for scientific evidence also. Um, our project stimulated um, debates of scientifically supported claims. I, I can give you many examples, but I will just choose some of them. Um, this is one of the claims or statements that you can find in Adyayana platform and uh, encouraging how uh, skill and knowledge development among the vulnerable groups can just debate about these, these issues. Um, that now, with the access to the information, to the scientific-based information, they can evaluate it, they can ev evaluate the information in their la daily lives, they can apply in the decision-making they are doing, in this case, in education, about how their children go to school and which actions they find there and what uh, the school is doing for them, if they are, have problems, if they um, fail, um, how mm, school han can help them, or if the actions they are really uh, taking in the schools are really actions based on scientific um, evidence. In this statement, for example, that uh, states that um, educational success being, is being tied to family socioeconomic levels. Um, that is stated by the reproduction theory. We can see in the, in the platform that um, it is uh, um, uh, labeled as not uh, scientific evidence. It's a, a note, it's, it's fake, it's not evidence-based. Um, on the contrary, we can find uh, examples that are researched and are published in scientific articles that demonstrates that, for example, the allergic literary gatherings that, uh, for instance, and we observe that individuals we have, that have limited formal education can develop a passion, thank you, for reading classic literature. Thank you, Anna. And also with children, children that um, are impoverished in, in, in disadvantaged, disadvantaged uh, backgrounds also participate in these dialogic literary gatherings, reading um, the books that maybe we don't think that they need to read or they can read um, because they are from the classical uh, culture. And um, after these kind of uh, actions, they really improve the educational results. And we can see here some of these, of these examples of children that are reading this, this, these books and they are really improving their, their um, results. So when Eric Collin Wright visited the first school that implemented the Logic Literary Gatherings, now that are we spread uh, in over 15,000 schools or worldwide. Uh, he stated that they demonstrate that the reproduction theory, the, re the reproduction theory was wrong with the concept of distinction. And it shows that even those who are poor can improve their results and can be motivated in classic culture uh, even more than the rich ones. So, um, we can also see that we have evidences that demonstrates is um, that are demonstrated in different scientific articles. It are JCR articles or Scopus articles. This is the criteria of the platform, so you cannot see any um, post label or any claim labeled as evidence or as hoax without three at least articles that shows and demonstrates that um, research and science um, has demonstrated this. And you can also find articles that has different results. So this is a controversy and you, have, you don't find a level of evidence or of, um, of oaks. Well, um, I want to be very short because um, uh, I don't want to be so long. I don't know how many minutes um, I have left, but I will just go on 
with, uh, this is just the example of one of the articles that demonstrates that with the implication of the families at school, uh, the students, they uh, improve their results. But uh, we can just also find in the platform, uh, uh, in addition to articles, that educators, students, families, scientists, and scien uh, citizenships, um, citizens in general can also contribute with comments and share their personal uh, experiences. We can find here some of these um, comments and experiences that um, also um, accompany you know, the, the articles uh, and the ev uh, scientific evidence. Of course, mm, an, a scientific platform cannot be based on comments but uh, as is it based on uh, research articles and scientific articles in top um, journals, uh, these comments can also uh, build no, upon this evidence presented in the, in the platform. And I would like to end with an example. Um, throughout the activities and the actions that we took in Dialogue and Science Project, uh, one of the families, uh, this was a, a Roma mother, a Roma woman, and she accessed to the platform and she wrote, uh, wrote the, the statements and access to the articles and access to the comments. And um, after that, uh, during the action, during the activity, she said uh, that uh, this, what, what I'm putting this in, my son has been placed uh, in a class that only has a notebook and pen. I thought that this adaptation, uh, adaptation, excuse me, adaptation was wrong for him. Now I see that I have to ask him to go to a regular classroom, not to be segregated. This is one, uh, this is of benefit of, uh, to him. So um, we can see that the evidences are also uh, um, accessed for vulnerable groups and this impacts on their decision making and on their daily lives. And this is the article that the woman, this mother, this Roma mother, um, uh, just access uh, through the through the platform, and this is the action and the transformation of his uh, of her um, of her son. That uh, the impact of the of the project uh, has offered us. So to conclude, um, we are in in including no, the social sciences in, that is in, interconnected with democratic principles. We are in a democratic society, society so uh, this dialogue is something that is natural to our um, way of being as a, as a society. So uh, the concept of dialogic sociology or dialogic society um, that is by, marked by rigorous intellectual discourse and scientific advancements through dialogue, um, guides impact measurements across scientific, political, and social uh, domains, specifically in the field of sociology of education, that is the field that we uh, work in a passionate way, and uh, engaging in a continuous democratic dialogue with all society stakeholders. Uh, including the diversity of citizens and also particularly vulnerable groups. This, uh, I think, empowers our discipline. So thank you very much for your attention. And thank you again, Professor Anna. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for, uh, please stay, please stay, do not go, <laughs> for a very interesting presentation that gives us hope that education is a possible way to overcome some problems or difficulties. This is super. It actually comes with the project so nicely as well. The, the hope, you know, the logo of the project. I don't know if you can see it. The hearts on the hands, it's kind of like hope and green. So perfect, perfect opening uh, presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you.